Let me roll in this Pac-12 story. Um, very interesting today that I've had a lot of sources with the within the TV industry telling me about the Pac-2 trying to figure out what they'll do to broadcast their TV games next year. Right. And one of the interesting questions is, how many games will the Pac-2 play in their home stadium? Because sources have told us for six, eight weeks now, hey, they're going to have a relationship of some sort with the Mountain West Conference. Okay, great. That's going to be a scheduling alliance. Everything will be fine. But CBS and Fox, who have the rights to the Mountain West contract, are contracted for home games. So if you are Oregon State and Washington State and you want to play in your home stadium, will you have a home game on TV? That's a very interesting question. And is this where it comes in, where you're going to do a deal with somebody like Script Sports, where you're going to do a deal with somebody um, that is going to the CW, that will broadcast your games regionally, and you'll make a pittance off of that, but I think that's what the Pac-2 are trying to figure out now. I truly think they're in the home stretch of this litigation. I think it's going to go to court. I think, unfortunately, that is going to wreck any opportunity the Pac-2 have to do a deal with the Mountain West on a merger basis. But I think from the people I'm talking to, the Pac-2 have made it very clear to their potential TV partners they want to stay together. They want to keep the conference alive going forward. They want to stay together as a, a two-team conference for 2024, and they want to see what they can do about distributing their, their home games next year. And I think it is as strong of an indicator as we have gotten at any point in time that Oregon State and Washington State, Jake, feel like they're going to win this court battle. Yeah, and I think that, you know, they're, they're definitely in a situation where, you know, time is just going to take, you know, there's just going to be more time involved in this than would be ideal. And so because of that, you know, you're in a situation where, yeah, scheduling is going to be a really interesting venture for 2024. And it's going to be a thing where you're just going to have to make the best of it if you're in Oregon State or Washington State football player, staff, or anyone involved in the program, certainly the fans. You know, you're going to have to make the best of this situation until you find sort of a, you know, more permanent solution. And, and my thing with this situation has always been that once the court situation's handled and you can get on to merging, however long that process takes, once you can get on to merging, I'm curious how many years on the grant of rights in the Mountain West will be left. Because when that merger happens, you're going to renegotiate that, that grant of rights. Do you extend it? Is it just a traditional renegotiation of it where the current terms stay exactly the same? You're just adding two teams to that, to that reimagined Pac-12? if you will. So I think there's a lot of questions about the mechanics of that and how that would happen. But I do think, yeah, unfortunately for these two, they are probably going to have to play some more road games than they'd like to play. The path is probably going to be just a touch more difficult. But the good news is, is that if you have a scheduling alliance with a group of five conference, you should still be right in the middle of every one of those games and you should still have every opportunity to win that conference. And that's what I've always maintained about this whole situation and conundrum you're going to be able to win a lot of football games and you are going to be able to jump into an expanded college football playoff situation so you know if every year or or three out of every five years you're in a situation where you can win um you know one maybe two games in the college football playoff right. and maybe one year you pop off and go to the national championship game somehow that's that's going to be great for business that's everything you could ever want as a fan of these two programs. So I still maintain in the long run, you're in a, you're, you're fine. You just need to get through this court thing before the seas will settle, if you will. Yeah. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense for the pack two to operate the way they're operating. There is no pressure for you to try and push forward. Um, because the only thing that matters is winning this legal battle that you have with the 10 exiting members. And I feel like they're in a good place to do that. Um, you have to be planning forward. If you are the pack two, you have to have some sort of distribution next year. Uh, and if if I were the Pac-2, Scripps Sports is where, I, is where I would be trying to go because they have, at Scripps Ion, they have representation in your neck of the woods. Um, you are a valuable TV partner. Washington State has historically done very well on TV in the PNW. 
Uh, so I would tell you that there is a very good chance um, that they can put something together on a regional basis, which is where TV is going anyway. You look at script sports with the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Arizona Coyotes, the WNBA, like they're doing regional deals um, where they are able to extend the reach of the Las Vegas Golden Knights through Idaho and Montana and Utah and Nevada, like growing their footprint exponent exponentially. And if you are Oregon State and Washington State, you have a chance, at least in your region, to be exclusive on Script Sports and Ion. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Yeah. It makes all agree. the sense in the world. So, 